Amen. What now? We have all kinds of scenarios coming our head when the storm starts raging. Yes. I should have went another route. I should have left them alone. I should have put my money in this. I should have listened when they said that. I would not have done this. We could go on and on and on days. the what ifs. So. Your mind, amen, the enemy wants you to continue to sit there and battle with yourself like, okay, if I had did this or if, if I had put this money here and I hadn't spent it on that, it don't matter. It's done. That's right. That's right. You can't take that back. Amen. That's when you got to anchor yourself and say, you know what? My hope is built on a solid foundation. I know that I made some mistakes, but I know God got me covered. Oh, yeah. that's right. Amen. So. so that's just one of those things we got to understand. Sometimes you get so to the point we just tired of everybody and everything. Amen. Don't even trip like, I just don't want nobody to even look at me today. Right. Please don't say nothing to me. I don't feel like being bothered. I mean, like, just keep it moving. Like, didn't you see I was looking straight? I won't I didn't even give you eye contact. Because I didn't want you to say anything to me. Sometimes you just get tired. That's when you got to throw them anchors. Amen. That's when you got to release the anchor. Amen. Philippians, amen, 4. Hit on the spiritual fortifiers, amen. The scripture fortifies. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Says, the message says, don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Amen. Throw that anchor. Release the anchor. Instead of, instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions, anchors, and praises, anchors, shape your worries into prayer. All this stuff you got going on, let your anchors, your petitions, your prayers, shape them. Amen. Into prayer. Let God know your concern. Before you know it, before it's all said and done, you can't even look back and say when it happened. Amen. But before you know it, in a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good. There you go. Will come and settle you now. Before you know it, God done start putting some stuff in motion, start working some stuff out, and all of a sudden your spirit is released and you're like, you know, I'm at ease. Yeah. I, I can't do nothing about it. No way. God got this. Got Amen. God got it under control. Yeah. Amen. You don't even know when it happened. You just know it happened. Woo. Amen. But that's when you start releasing those spiritual first fortifiers. Amen. Those anchors. And God said, you know what? Now that you have released them, I'm going to stabilize you. Yes. Yeah. 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 Be very aware that fear involves torment. When you're afraid of mishap and misfortunes and all kinds of bad stuff going on, you're going to torment yourself trying to figure out how to get it fixed. Uh -huh. Amen. You're going to torment yourself trying to figure out what not to do. Yes. Amen. Or how to change something. The enemy just wants you to mess your mind up because, because a long, all the time you're tormenting yourself, you're not focusing on the right thing. Go ahead and tell the truth. Amen. And as long as he knows it works on you, he'll keep pointing it on. Amen. If the enemy knows that he can throw anything in your path and all you're going to do is sit and contemplate on it and every two or three days you're going to go back and visit that issue, he's going to keep putting it in there. He's going to like, oh, they ain't over this yet. Go ahead. They said they finished with it, mm. but let me just throw a little hint out there and see where they go. Yes, yes. Amen. We don't know how to just let, when we say leave it at the altar, it's supposed to be left there. Yes. You don't pick it up and take it back with you and say, well, you know what, God, I'll bring it back to you next week. No. You're supposed to left it there. Go ahead. Amen. But the enemy know that you still got some remnants on you, so he's going to keep tormenting you, and he knows it's going to occupy your space and time. Yes. We let folks occupy too much time. Amen. You say you deliver from some people. You say you do with them, you ain't dealing with them no more. Say they're going to cause you too much torment, trouble, too much thought process, but then wait a little while. <laughs> they may come back up again. Oh, I'm through with them, but I just want to say, I just had to say this. You know, this I just wanted to get this out. You through with them, but yet they still occupying your space and mind. Go ahead. Amen. You gotta anchor yourself, amen, so that, like you said, you know what? The whole thing about it is forgiveness. It ain't even about forgetting. Mm -hmm. But it shouldn't, and when you forgive someone, even if it do come to your head, the thoughts that come along with it shouldn't be the same. Go ahead, that's right. It's all about the thoughts that come along with it. That's Amen. That's why you got to have that anchor in there. Amen. Because in John, 1 John, Amen. Four, it actually reads like this in the message. First of all, it says, God is love in verse 17. When we take up permanent residence in a life of love, 
That means that this ain't my temporary house, my temporary dwelling. Because you know, on the application, they got permanent residence, and then when you're living in there, because sometimes, especially when you're in college and all kinds of stuff, you have places where you just live. That's right. yeah. This ain't what I call home, but this is where I'm at. Right. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, it says, when we take a permanent residence in a life of love, that means that ain't love ain't something that we just have to go by every now and then and stop over and visit. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. That means that that's permanent. Amen. It's that we live in God, and God lives in us. This way, love has the run of the house. Amen. Love can go any way it wants to. Because right. it's permanent residence. That means in your mind, when, there was something, when those issues and those contrary things start coming up, love just said, wait a minute, no, no, you got to get out of here. Love got free reign in the house. So that means that whenever the enemy try to attack you with something else, love can come and knock it right on out. Say, we don't have this in this house. Because if you have a house and you pay bills, there's some things you don't allow in there. You say, I don't care if you do it, that's cool. But you won't do it in my house. You can do it somewhere else, I mean, and I ain't condemning you for doing it. Hey, I ain't saying.